Hello and welcome to this online yin offering. My name is Karina and I'll be guiding you through this medium length yin yoga practice. Before we begin, it's going to be a good idea if you can gather for yourself a couple of props that you might want to use for this practice. Um, beside me here, I've got a yoga bolster and a block. If you have the luxury of those yoga items, great. If you're practicing at home, a couple of bed pillows work really nicely instead of a bolster. And you might even find that a, a rolled up blanket or another cushion that you can tuck under the body is a nice substitute for a block. I'm also sitting on a folded blanket. So a blanket is a pretty versatile thing that we can use for a, a multitude of um, supports for the body. So if you need to go and get those things before we start, please do. And then we're going to start this practice in whatever would be the most comfortable position for you. You don't have to sit up. You could lay down on the floor. You could lean back against a wall, whatever you would like to do to start. And allow that place where you begin to be a position where you feel like you can start in a restful way. Your eyes could be opened, your eyes could be closed. If you're laying on the floor and it would feel good to you, you could let the hands rest on the body or just sprawl the arms out and take up some space. And as you're settling in there, I'll start introducing the concept or the intention for this practice. And the concept on offer is the idea of using this practice today as a place where you can begin to feel yourself realign. If you're joining in with this practice at the time of filming, I bet there is a, a lot in your world right now that doesn't feel like it's in alignment. That nothing feels that it's as it should be. And everything feels strange. And if you're practicing with us in this video, many, many moons from now <laughs> into the future, I'm sure there's something else today for you that feels like it's out of place. It might be something within you. It might be a life circumstance, a relationship. And so it's not the intention of this practice today to fix everything and put it back in its place, rather, the practice is here on offer for you to feel that you might get a little bit closer to feeling centered within yourself. So we're going to use the yin shapes and the breath work to come back home to self, or at least a little bit closer. And so in whatever position you are beginning in, just take a little bit of time to bring your attention under your body and feeling into the places where your body is making direct contact with another surface. You could start at your feet and slowly scan your way up to your head if you're laying on your back. You could start right down at the ground if you're sitting. And once you've got a bit of a map outlined of where your body is making direct contact with something else, and just slowly spend the next three or four exhalations seeing what it feels like to let your body weight sink in to those surfaces.
moving down into the grain of gravity. And then very gently becoming a little more aware of all the places in your body that are not making direct contact with the surface, so probably the front of your body, your face, maybe your arms or anywhere that you have skin exposed, making gentle contact with the air in the room that you're in. And now take three or four inhales and feel into those places that are lighter. And then into your whole body, take a slow, full breath in. Open your mouth and breathe out. And if that felt particularly good, do it again or do it another couple of times. And in no particular hurry, let's begin to make your way toward an upright seat. When you get there, we're going to bring the hands to prayer. It's okay through this practice if you feel off-center. It's okay if you feel irritated. It's okay to have thoughts travel through your mind. So as you bring your hands to your own heart to see if it's possible to Give yourself some permission to share your practice with whatever's going to float through. Moving through pockets that are quiet and still and then moving through pockets that feel thick and thought heavy. Welcome yourself in exactly as you are in this moment. Namaste. We are going to start this sequence off with a couple of really great yin shapes that focus on the neck and the upper back, and they're called graceful bow. So in your, in your comfortable upright seat, just check and see that your hips and knees are going to be happy to remain where they are for a few more minutes. There'll be a checkpoint in the middle of the first side and you can rearrange your legs if they want that. <laughs> it doesn't really matter how you sit. You don't have to sit in anything kind of yogic. You could have your legs splayed out. It doesn't matter because we're going to be focusing on the upper body. So just have a, have a little... Have a little rearrange with what you need. And then when you're settled, we're going to start by taking your right hand so you can mirror the screen. Take your right hand and we're going to gently wrap that around the back. A couple of different things that could happen here. You could let the back of the hand curl around the waist and rest there. You could let the fingers creep around your left elbow crease and hang. Or for a slightly more... Uh, clasped kind of feeling you could take the palm of your left hand and press it into the palm of your right hand and let that move into the side waist as this shoulder relaxes into feeling clasped if there's a lot going on in this shoulder that feels too intense to be held that way release the arms this is just going to add a little extra tensioning before we begin And then if you feel okay to close your eyes and get a sense of your skeleton deeply embedded in your body, resting into this shape, heavy bones, soft belly, 
and then bring your focus up to the skull part of your skeleton. And as you focus up here at the head, allow gravity to enter into your practice and take the effort for you as we begin to breathe up toward the head. And as you exhale, let gravity be the force that helps you tip your head over sideways toward your left shoulder. So the first part of graceful bow focuses on the side of the neck. So that's the, tar that's the target map. Depending on what you're doing with your arms, that might feel like you start to get sensation through the shoulder and down into the arm as well. And what's often great here is for you to see what happens if you roll your face slightly up or down, noticing where that shifts the sensation in the neck tissue. The smallest millimeter of movement can have a really big impact on what you feel. So make sure you're moving very mindfully. Have a little check in and see if you're squeezing your teeth together. And if you need to do that. Come in close to the feeling of your breath flowing as if you could use your breath and breathe into what you're feeling in your neck. The first part of graceful bow that we're in now has about three or four breaths left. Of course, at any time, if you need to come out of a shape sooner or stay for longer, you have the bonus of being able to pause the video or come out of the shape and simply rest before we meet up again. On your next breath in, really lightly, just help your head come back up on top of the body. We're going to keep the arms as they are. The second part of graceful bow, we now turn the head to the direction of your left shoulder. And now we let the chin come forward. So the intention of letting the chin come forward is to try and shift the target area more along the posterior part of the neck. You may very well keep feeling it in the side of your neck here, which is fine. And just like we played with moving the head on the first part, you can check it out. So your chin might melt over closer to the shoulder end of your collarbone. It might be a bit more central over the collarbone. You might even actually prefer it right in the middle, coming forward. There's a good chance that in this second part, there'll be some kind of yin sensation that continues to move down into your back. Breathe into that. And there's about two exhalations left on offer here. On your next breath in, just softly float the head up. Oh, release the arms. 
if being still makes sense, drop into a still pocket. If you want to move a little bit, roll your shoulders, ease that out. It's really important that in this practice you feel okay to move in an instinctive way, to not suppress that. And we're going to settle in for a brief seated rebound and this could be the time when you have a quick chat with your lower body and see if you're still okay to be here. If not, change it up, get comfortable again, move your legs so that your seat is a restful place. The intention of a rebound in yin is multi-layered. One intention is to have a place where there's little to no effort in the body. So that your tissues can rehydrate and reconfigure their shape. Another intention is to have that time where you're not doing anything per se, to observe what the yin shape did. How did it affect you? What do you feel now? What do you feel as you rest? If what you need is more time in that rest, please take it and then come and join us when you're ready. Otherwise, we're going to start shifting into the opposite side. So opposite arm, you take your left arm behind the back. Bearing in mind, shoulders have different stuff going on in them. So you may need to do something slightly different to take care of that shoulder on this side. You've got fingers curled around the elbow crease. You've got palms pressed together. You've got no inclusion of the arm. You decide. Heavy bones. Feeling up into the head. Take a slow breath in. And as you breathe out, gravity is there to help the head tip over. So the side of the neck is where we begin. Navigate around the side of your neck with little incremental movements. See what feels like too much. And what feels like not enough. Come into your breathing. Imagine you could infuse your breath into the areas that you're getting the most sensation. Softening into two more exhales. Slowly climbing up and out with the head. And then when you're ready, we'll come into the second part. So turning your head over, 
to your right shoulder and then letting the chin come forward. Small incremental moves of the chin will take you into different regions of your tissue. Back of the neck, upper back, shoulder blade, down the back. Check it out. Traveling through two more exhales. Breathing in, gently release. Release the arms. Follow your instinct. Movement of stillness. And now with all of that that we've just experienced in the upper body, let's now bring the body down into a rebound that's completely grounded. So find a way to shift your body down to the floor in a position where particularly your head and shoulder girdle and arms can fully rest and surrender. So it might just be that you roll onto your back. You might prefer to be on your belly. And as the head and shoulder girdle and arms meet the ground, let them really pour down into the floor. Full surrender. What do you feel? And then once again, just appreciating the rest of the back of your body. Receiving support from the floor, the surfaces of the floor. And the lightness of the parts of your body that are not in contact with anything. Breathing slowly down into your abdomen and breathing out. And we're going to be making our way up to sitting. So no rush. If you want to add in any movements first, do that. Hugging knees to chest, moving around in any way that feels good. 
And then bringing yourself up to sitting. We're going to get organized now for a forward fold. And I have butterfly in mind for us. So seated forward fold. It's collecting your bibs and bobs, your props around you. And then we're coming up to sit with the feet out in front together. Now, they don't have to be squeezing together. In fact, the legs are invited to be quite effortless, but you can decide how close to the body or far away from the body you'd like your feet to be. And this will largely be determined by how comfortable that feels in your joints, knees and hips, but also how this changes the experience of what you feel. So potential places to feel into here are the inner legs, the adductors, the outer hips, the glutes, and along the back. And this little variable of moving your feet might adjust those levels for you. But some people only feel it in their back. Some people only feel it in their adductors. So it will be unique for you. If you find that your pelvis is being pulled under a little bit and it's difficult to come forward, try sitting up on something folded like your blanket. And then returning back to the feeling of heavy bones as you sit. So as, as least amount of effort here as you sit, just sinking with gravity down into the floor, appreciating the natural weight of your bones, letting go of any sense of trying to pull your core in or those other muscular habits. Take a breath in. And as you breathe out, letting the head tip forward with gravity, yeah. starting a slow chain reaction as the upper body comes forward. There'll be a point where you naturally stop If a light amount of swaying from side to side is easeful before you move towards stillness, move a little bit. So some people find that hanging and letting the head hang is great. It doesn't, it doesn't make them feel like they've got a guard up to protect themselves. It doesn't feel too strong. So that's fine. But if you find that hanging creates too much sensation, that's when you want to build props up from beneath. And that could be that you let the head rest on something. The head's really heavy. It'll take a lot of that sensation out of the back if you let it rest on something, especially if you keep building it up. Or it could even be that you grab your cushions and have them out in front of you as something to rest down into. So this is going to be about four minutes, our butterfly. Give yourself lots of permission to add or subtract props throughout the time frame and come out sooner than we do if, if your body is saying it's had enough and take a little longer in the rebound. As you're settling in, bring your breath in with you. When things feel out of alignment in life, it can challenge our want to control. One of the only things that you really do have control over is your breath. You can actively make your breath longer or smoother. You can hold your breath. You can also let go of controlling your breath completely and trust that your body will make sure that you keep breathing. which is nice. So 
if you've been feeling a little bit out of sorts because of all the things that you can't control right now. Come into the feeling of sitting in the driver's seat of your breath. And we have about eight to 12 breaths to explore here any way you like, unless you need to come out sooner. And if you're ready to come out of the shape now, take a slow, deliberate breath into your back. Exhale out. And begin the slow motion process of climbing back up through your spine. If you want to sit up there for a little bit and recalibrate, good. And then eventually bring yourself down to a place that's really effortless and you can rebound. You may even find that it is extra supportive to tuck something under your knees if you're going to be laying all the way on your back. So that's there for you. And then come and let that rest for a little bit. breathing into whatever new sensations come to visit you in the rebound, the after effects. Sometimes people get quite a strong sensation in their lower back of an aching, spreading sensation. which is likely due to all the tissue that's been elongated over time, four minutes. That's just reorienting itself back around the, the shape of the curve of your lumbar spine. Fluid is being pulled back into that tissue. So this rebound is really, really important and precious. Breathe into the rebound.
if your natural instinct is to hug the knees to the chest for a little bit after that, that can feel really nice. Take as much time resting as you need. And then we're gonna stay on the back. So if you've been rebounding in a different position, bring yourself over onto your back and clear some space on your mat. And the last couple of shapes before we come into some breath work is to gently coil the body. So we're gonna walk the feet up onto the mat. And then we're gonna start by taking the right leg and floating it up and cross it over the left leg and What's often very helpful in bodies is to make a little adjustment with the pelvis before you turn. So we're just gonna pick the hips up slightly and bring them over to the right side of the mat and drop them down. This just helps to get the spine in place when we then let the knees come over to the left. Extending that right arm out. Now you might find that you want something tucked under the knees or you might wanna rearrange them so they're stacked or it's just the bottom leg that's straight. So please make sure you uh, customize the shape to suit you. You could turn the head out to the right. Some people find that this back arm lifts off the floor, which is fine, as it might be really providing quite a, quite a kind of good feeling <laughs> as the front of the chest gets a gentle yin opener. But if it's too much, prop it with something so that the arm can rest. And this is gonna be about a three minute rest. So it's really important that you feel okay where you are. anywhere from this right hip up along your trunk, front sides and back and up to the front of the right shoulder could be highlighted as sensation places in this shape. And then at the deepest level, the spine is getting a passive twist. When you're exhaling, let yourself sink down into where you can feel surfaces holding your body. And when you inhale, breathe up and out into the places that feel light and spacious, that are not in contact with anything. traveling through these yin and yang waves of breath up and down for about five more breath waves.
a slow breath into your whole spine. Breathing out. And gently unwind. Again, follow your instinct here as to where you would rest well, but have it have some kind of intention there where the spine is not twisted when you come to rest. So feet could come up onto the floor. If it feels good, you could even window wipe the knees a couple of times. You possibly even let the knees knock together as you just take a little quiet moment in between sides. Take as much rest as you need. And then we're going to balance out the other side. So this time it'll be left leg crossing over the right. Little shift of hips to the left. And then coming over to the right. Figure out what you need on this side. It could be a little different. You may want to change the orientation of legs. That left arm might like to be propped again. Sometimes a little extra weight on this top leg can feel really grounding if you're not getting a pinch in the hip. We're going to be settling in again for a few minutes, so make sure this is working for you. Make sure this agrees with you. Exhale is there to help the body sink and descend and feel held. And the inhale is there to help you feel into where there is lightness, where you have room to expand, room to open. Traveling through two more waves of breath. And then once again, easing out and come and take a rebound of your choice. Just give 
take yourself some time to rest there. And in no particular speed or pace, we're going to come up and find an upright seat. And if you're feeling a bit cool, you might grab a blanket or a shawl and just drape yourself here. Before we come and settle into Shavasana, there's some breath work, some pranayam on offer. So you might return back to the upright seat you had for graceful bow. You might prefer something different at this point. Sit up on something, lean back, wherever you feel that you will be not overly disturbed by your body being uncomfortable and wanting you to rearrange it. Eyes could be opened or closed. So first just let yourself settle into your seat, heavy bones. Little to no effort required. And then hone in on the effort that's being used in your face. Facial muscles, jaw area, mouth. See what's possible to let melt off in terms of effort. Just let your breath come and go. And then we're going to start bringing in our ujjayi breath. You might be really familiar with this in a more fast moving, energizing yoga practice. It's a very, very beneficial uh, kind of breathing and can be extremely effective just on its own as a meditative offering. So because we're in a more meditative state here, if you're used to coming into this breath in a really strong, dynamic way, allow it to be a bit softer. And if you've never practiced this breath before, all we're doing to start is making a small shift inside the throat. So I often describe this as a feeling of the front of the throat trying to hug the back lovingly. And in essence, what we're creating is a slight narrowing of your windpipe in which you're breathing up and down along. As you play with that, there's a couple of things that can change. One, you might feel the sensation of your breath now shifting its way up and down the back portion of your throat. And you might also notice that the sound of your breath has shifted. Sometimes it's described as being like the ocean or a whisper. It shouldn't feel like a uh, very labored. And that gentle action of soft hug inside the throat wants to be sustained both as you inhale and exhale. So however you're exploring that, however you're playing with that, this is the first part of the pranayam. So you could close your eyes if you want, allow them to be softly open if that's better. And just dive into this kind of breath for a little bit.
the next part is to continue as you are, but now we're going to take the Ujjayi breath into even more of a yin-like place. So as you continue to hug the front of the throat to the back and feel that breath travel up and down the back of the throat, see what happens if you adjust the effort of your breath all the way down to about 10%. You can still have a deep breath. It just might be very slow. Like a baby version of the Ujjayi. The sound of the ocean in your breath might even evaporate completely until it's just a thin silvery cord of sensation. Shifting up and down the back of the throat. And although the effort might have decreased, is it possible for you to Lean in with your attention to the feeling and the experience of breathing in this way. Yin pranayama. And we'll drop in here for a little bit as well. If you would prefer to stay just as you are in lieu of coming down to the floor for Shavasana, you absolutely can. Otherwise, this might be a good time for you to very, very slowly rearrange your posture so that you can come down to the floor and get comfortable and warm for a couple of quiet minutes of rest. You could take the breath practice down with you, or you could just let it melt away. And so this is just going to be quiet, quiet rest time. Gather in whatever support you need. Be comfortable.
And in a few minutes, I will gently ring the bowl to bring us back up and out again. Beginning to invite in some deeper breaths. Take as many deeper breaths as you need before you feel like you're ready to move. might start out with just a turning of the head from side to side or an opening of your hands, a stretching of feet. If bigger movements want to come into the body, take a stretch, maybe spend some time on your side. And then think about how you're going to bring yourself up to a seated position. So we can close this practice. And when you get there, just bring in the hands back to prayer at the heart. Taking in deeply that reminder of 
having control of your breath. When the outside world feels out of your grasp in terms of being able to trust any outcomes or when things don't feel clear, the breath is how you can just get a little bit more on top of what the inside feels like for you. Even if it's just for a few moments. So hopefully on some level, this practice has helped you feel a little bit more aligned with yourself. We'll take a closing breath in together. Breathing out. Thank you. Namaste.